So, latest problem with the uh, Jaguar is, as you can see, a battery warning uh, light boots open because I've been uh, messing about with the battery. Um, so, setting off, um, this came on, uh, and usually this means I mean, the car will start fine. But this this means that the um, the car is not the alternator is not charging the battery for whatever reason. Um, so I thought, well, we'll uh, have a little experiment and uh, drive along. And actually, if you uh, keep driving with this, the car will slowly consume um, the available battery power, and you'll find you start getting electronic module failures. Uh, they all come quite close together. Um, so, uh, you know, currently I've got the uh, uh, entertainment module switched off. Um, in fact, you'll notice it hasn't even come on um, uh, when I've started the car. I've got the climate control switched off and so on. Um, but uh, I found the first thing that would happen was that the uh, D here would start to flash and it's a gearbox fault. Uh, so it's not got any power to shift ratios. Um, and then you start getting various other things. You find the uh, infotainment will shut down. Then you get ES, ES, ABS not available, DSC not available. And all, as the uh, modules just fall over one by one, uh, you'll, uh, you'll then get the headlights conking out and uh, the, uh, the car will grind to a halt. Uh, so uh, let's look into this and uh, find out what's the matter. So the uh, first place to start is the battery. And you've just got to check that the battery terminals are all nipped up tightly. And these are all fine. Um, you'll see there I've put a clamp meter on and at rest the car is drawing 20 amps from the uh, battery with nothing switched on. Um, if you start switching on the air conditioning, headlights and wipers and so on, it'll be considerably more than that. I've got a uh, multimeter here set to volts and if I uh, put it on the uh, battery we can see that with the engine running the voltage is 11.76 volts. Um, this is not good, it should be um, more than 13.6 anyway, more like 14 volts. So below 12 volts. With the uh, engine uh, switched off, the um, voltage on the battery is about sort of 12 and a half volts. But then I've uh, been running running the car um, locally, um, and it gets progressively um, more and more flat. As you can see, this is uh, dropping down slowly. 11.75. In a minute, it'll be 11.74, and so on until the electronic modules in the car can no longer cope with the uh, low voltage. You can uh, see the difference in voltage now. The uh, battery is connected to a battery charger. Um, I've got uh, a juicy one here, which will uh, provide uh, 30 amps all day long. In fact, um, it looks on the clamp meter. It looks like we're shoving about 45, 46 amps into this battery. So. Uh, it shouldn't uh, take too long to uh, charge up. Um, so what we're going to do now is uh, put the car on SDD and uh, just check it really as an alternator failure and there's not been some electronic module that uh, orders the alternator to charge that has failed instead. So uh, here we are in SDD. Let's um, get some information uh, gathered about the car. Of course, it's on the battery charger, so we've got a green uh, battery, and uh, I've got um, a clone Mongoose JLR um, um, interface connected here. Have a look at my other videos, which uh, tell you about SDD. So uh, what we want to do is diagnosis. Let's click on that, and then it'll be gathering a bit of information, so I'll uh, cut this bit out, and we'll come back when the uh, thick car is finished. So uh, now we've had our um, information gathering, let's click on selected symptoms. And what we want to select here, well, it's probably electrical. Um, instruments maybe. 
uh, warning lamps, battery and alternator lamp, lamp illuminated. Let me click on continue. Okay, are we thinking about things? Loading recommended candidates. So what I've done is uh, I've read the uh, diagnostic trouble codes with the um, with the engine running and the uh, fault uh, illuminated, and uh, here we've got uh, generator system performance. So that sounds like, uh, and it's a uh, present fault. So let's have a look at that. PCM P065A. Generator circuit, short to ground, high resistance, open circuit. Generator mechanical failure. Um, so to check generator circuit, repair wiring harness, check and install a new generator as required. Uh, refer to warranty policy, blah de blah de blah. So that doesn't get me any further forward. There are some diagnostics um, in the um, um, in the recommendations. Uh, you can have a little look down here. Um, um, and you can you can find uh, the test procedure for uh, the alternator, which um, parts of the loom to uh, check, uh, which pins to probe, and what the voltages should be on those. So uh, what I'm going to do is um, fit a good, um, a known good uh, alternator onto the car, and um, hopefully um, this will go away. Um, so. Here we go. So we've got our uh, replacement alternator. Doesn't look pretty, but uh, doesn't have to. I'm sure mine will look just as bad. Bearings seem pretty good. This is uh, AW93103000 AB. It's off an XJ uh, 3 litre uh, diesel. So we're going to uh, take the old one off and uh, put this one on. So stage one is to put the car up on axle stands so that we can uh, get underneath here. Okay, so now it's on uh, axle stands. Uh, the first job underneath the front is to remove the plastic under tray. Um, and essentially what we're trying to remove now is this piece so that we can get under here um, there are four bolts that hold it on um, you might need uh, a pit or uh, uh, to raise your uh, axle stands a little bit uh, further so that you can shimmy underneath um, always nice to have a little uh, a little sweeping brush as well because all the uh, gravel and crap that falls down you know you don't want to be uh, rolling around in that so just have a little sweep off and that will make your uh, life a bit more comfortable okay so that's the uh, under tray down there's two nuts at the front and uh, four bolts at the back it's quite uh, a substantial piece this so don't be underneath it when you undo the last uh, nut uh, so we'll uh, remove that, take that out of the way, and then uh, we can get underneath the car and start looking for the alternator. So uh, first step of course is to disconnect the battery. Um, I would disconnect both terminals, uh, do the um, ground first, so that if you, um, while you're t taking the um, positive off if you touch the body then you don't short the battery so if you take the uh, negative off first and put it back on last um, these are 10 millimeter uh, nuts so here we are underneath the car just for reference this is forwards and what you're looking at is this alloy job here which is turbocharger bypass valve there are rubber t hoses on each side uh, both of which you'll need to get rid of uh, so that you can effectively get behind um, because you see in the distance um, 
just where my finger is there and that's the belt going around the uh, alternator pulley so essentially we've got to get this stuff out the way so uh, take these rubber hoses off and so you can get to the bolts that hold on the turbocharger bypass valve so uh, when you take these off uh, have a rag or something uh, handy because if your car's anything like mine um, there's a little bit of oil in these pipes uh, that'll just drip out onto you so uh, a couple of rags so next bit of awkwardness once you've got to uh, this stage where you've disconnected your uh, rubber pipes on the corners of the turbo bypass you've got to get um, this uh, clip off um, which is just where this thing splits and also if we go around here at the side so behind here there's this pipe and again you need to get to that uh, Jubilee clip as well all very tricky you uh, may find it easier to do as I've done rather than um, take this Jubilee clip off straight away uh, and this power connector that's in a, um, an awkward position. If you just take the uh, bolt that uh, hold the uh, turbo wastegate valve out, then you'll find that this thing moves around and you can uh, easily get to the connector and the Jubilee clip. So just a bit of a tip. Uh, and then this should uh, wiggle off the big pipe off, uh, of which you've uh, slackened the Jubilee clip. So uh, back in a moment. So once you've uh, removed your um, uh, turbo waste uh, valve, I found the uh, connector on it, uh, the electrical connector, uh, difficult to get off, so I've just left it here, uh, still connected. Uh, you don't need to remove it necessarily. Um, quite safe over there. Uh, there's this pipe, uh, which has got a 10 uh, mil uh, bolt that holds it in. You take that off, and then what you can see, uh, if I just get it out of the way here, is uh, there's a, a rubber pipe that goes onto it uh, and a Jubilee clip. Again, in a sort of, I can't really get the uh, view here uh, because of the light, but um, in a bit of an awkward place. So, once again, you know, a pair of pliers to release the circlip. And then um, if you can get onto that Jubilee clip with either a 7mm socket or a flat blade screwdriver, uh, you'll be able to get that off. And then this whole thing will come out the way. And then you can see the alternator is just here, ever so tempting, uh, in, uh, just into view. So once you've got that uh, pipe out of the way, you can see the uh, pipe in the distance there. I'll just light it up. Yeah, there's the terminal, the main terminal for the uh, alternator, there's the control terminal on the back, there it is with its bolts and you can see the belt. So basically there's the tensioner just above uh, in here which you just have to slacken off, unhook the belt from the uh, pulley and then disconnect the, uh, disconnect the bolts holding it on and wiggle it out. Um, <laughs> as easy as that. So when you get to this stage you'll find your uh, alternator is here. This is the sump. Sorry, well the poor picture so it's dark under here. Um, and it won't come out so what you have to do is uh, remove the... in here if I can get some light on it uh, is the uh, engine mount and basically you just go under here um, slacken that off and in the workshop manual it says to jack the engine up by about 15 millimeters and then you'll be able to get the alternator out um, you just, usually just put a piece of wood under the uh, sump and uh, gently uh, jack the engine up that way so this is the alternator out I've got this exchange one to put in, it looks a bit tatty but should do the job um, you may see on write-ups actually getting this out is extremely difficult you have to jack up the engine uh, be careful not to uh, dent the sump and uh, it needs a bit of wiggling with a screwdriver the engine will actually move laterally um, a little bit as well and that will enable you to get the alternator out but it is a really tight fit um, 
but it will come between the sump and the subframe because as you can see I've done it you, uh, if you want my uh, patented way of getting the alternator back in you can see my uh, jack there is supporting the sump um, I've got the alternator there and the uh, scissor jack underneath it and that's just pushing it into the uh, gap between the sump and the subframe and you'll find that will just ease itself in and then you can drop the engine again and jiggle it into place so uh, let's have a look in the back of here and uh, see why this thing dropped me at the side of the road in the rain so anyway, these are the uh, three little uh, nuts removed let's take the back off and what can we see in here Hmm, so, brushes look okay, good condition. There's a little uh, anti-tamper screw here that I'm going to have to drill out and then this uh, assembly should come away, which I think got the voltage regulator sort of circuitry in it. So uh, here we go, I'll just uh, drill this screw out here. So we've uh, taken this off. Uh, a bit of destructive uh, um, examination and uh, basically you've got these uh, uh, diodes are dotted around here um, that basically uh, form a common positive um, and the same there are similar ones dotted around embedded in the aluminium here probably for cooling um, and uh, I've tested all of these and this one um, here doesn't give the same reading as all of the others so I guess um, I've got a faulty diode here which is why the thing uh, broke in the first place so for example if I probe this to, to, to base point four, and this is on uh, diode check 0.465 slightly different to all of the others which are about 5.55 um, if I uh, difficult to do with one hand, but if we probe across the diode, we just drop two volts across it. Whereas everywhere else, doing the same thing. Uh, let me find a suitable one. There we go, out of limits. And then obviously in the direction that the diode is supposed to work, we go 0.55, uh, and on all the others you find that's 0.55 as well. 0 0.54, 0 0.55, 55, and this one that was dodgy, 0.46, and again it's open in the reverse direction. There we go. Um, whereas all of these others, out, out of limits, out of limits, out of limits. So that's it. Faulty diode um, in the rectifier section uh, has killed this alternator. Okay, I uh, hope you find that useful. And as always, uh, thanks for watching.